Okay, we're gonna answer a quick question from Universal Production slash, we're gonna do a little tutorial. Universal Production says, my friend, how can I play like you? Well, that's an interesting question. I don't teach people how to play like me. I teach people some techniques that I use and the blending of styles and then I encourage you to make these techniques your own because what you're gonna come up with off of the techniques is gonna be way cooler than what I do because what you do is personal to you. Now, first and foremost, I practice and play on a lot of instruments that aren't saturated and aren't loud. Um, so Whitlow, I've been playing on it quite a bit. There's no saturation to hide behind on this. This is not a loud, not a sensitive instrument. I originally didn't like this instrument because I didn't know about melodics. I didn't know about open, closed glottis discipline. Also, more Chang. There's no saturation, most more Chang. <coughs> and there is melodic content in a lot of good more Chang, so. And when we hear more Chang players and Monat players doing that, doing exactly what I was doing there, it's called open closed glottis melodics, where we are breathing and holding our breath. And it's called open closed because whenever we breathe, our glottis is open. Whenever we hold our breath, put your fingers right on your throat. You can even see my throat move. That's me closing my glottis. So just in closing my glottis, I can get a different tone from every mouth position. I'm going to go, we're going to go open, close, open, close, open, close, breathe, hold, breathe, hold, breathe, hold. And there, see, I'm dropping my tone down. I can all off of my open, I can also take my tone up a notch. And a lot of people don't know about open close because it's not something we really do much when we're talking or playing any other instrument that I can think of. And what we're gonna do is that I, I encourage you to play instruments that aren't saturated and loud, especially in your practice, because the extra effort and not having all that saturation blending everything together lets you pinpoint your open close technique more. This is a very simple melodic tool. I didn't like this one when I first got it. It's a Whitlow. There's not much, there's not a lot of volume to it, but in it being quiet and not having any saturation, we can hear our open close melodics better. I'm gonna go open close. And if we think of our open close as one is open, the tone above it would be two would be closed, three above that would be open, four above that would be closed. In this numbering system, all of the open tones are going to be odd numbers. All of the closed tones are going to be even. So we're using these open closed melodics to build scales. One, two, one, two, one, two. I'm not really changing anything in my mouth. We're not jumping way up in tone. We're just open breathing either in or out. And then we're closing. One, two, one, two, one, two. There, see, my tone went down because as we go up this scale of equal intonation, open, close, open, close. There's also, if I start with open, there's also always gonna be a close beneath that. And that's what happened there. Open, close, open, close. And don't pay any attention to my singing. I am a horrible singer. We're gonna go an open, close below that. What we wanna avoid is making big jumps at first. This is why we're doing it on a, a instrument that's not very sensitive and not very saturated and has melodic capabilities because we wanna be able to hear our proper changes in our technique. Now we can go open, close, open, one, two, three, one, two, three. And you can actually go all the way up to eight. It's always going to be open, close, open, close. If you're, if you're going just one tone above and make, don't make big changes. Listen for the one, two, three, four. We're going to try. I'm just going to go ahead and try. I'm still a student of the form of open, close melodics. And we're going to get something that's even cleaner so we can hear it and louder. This is, this is a harp specifically made for melodics. This is a Shipanov F2. Some of these more expensive, really super melodic instruments that don't have a drone. Now, the drone really comes into play when we play uh, more Chang. Um, instruments without drone are really good for practicing on and doing melodic as well. One, two, three, three, two, one. I think I'm actually coming down in my tone a little bit. I need to come up. Uh, 
Oh, we can do this all the way up to eight. I'm just going to attempt it. I'm not very good at it. And we can start linking this together if I go three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two, one. And every time we hit our close technique, every time we're holding our breath, we have that bell ring. Every time we breathe. Now we can start, I would practice these scales every single day. Start off just trying just one, two, one, two, one, two, then try to get up to three, then try to get up to at least five. Open, close, open, close, open, close, open, up and down continually practice your melodic scales every day but also in between practicing your melodic scales try linking them together in into songs i'm just going to go three two one and then i'm just going to let it go open and close and i'm going to jump around and i'm going to start constructing melodies out of it and i'm also not only am i breathing and holding my breath i'm moving my tongue i'm raising the tip of my tongue up i'm channeling i'm doing all the subtle nuances i would normally do with regular open play i'm still doing them even in the closed position and i'm when i'm breathing out sometimes it's almost like i'm whistling i'm not just breathing out like ha i'm Three, two, one. Now, progressing onward from there, we're going to go back to the Morchang because this is a pure melodic. This is a very, Shipanov are extremely melodic instruments. Very, very good. We're going to jump over to something less sensitive and less pure. We're going to jump over to a Morchang and we're going to do that same thing. Morchang, it's like, it's like whistling. I, I love the Morchang. And I'm going to go ahead in building my melodic um, structure, my song structure. I'm at first I'm coming up with a, a template and I'm going around and then I'm going to let it go free and I'm going to start doing some pulsating, some open and closed pulsating. <laughs> As I'm pulsating, open, close, open, close, open, close, I'm really stuttering my breath. Starting at the top, I'll come down and I'll go all around. And to get your tone higher, keep your tongue more forward at the, at the front of your mouth as you want your tone to drop. Start dropping your tongue down and in the back. And you'll notice there's a lot of subtlety you can get out of this. Just in slight changes in your tongue at the front, at the back, changes of the sides of your cheeks as you channel air under your tongue or over your tongue, there's gonna be a whole bunch you can do. Go ahead and I would suggest if you're healthy enough, do some cardio and then play the harp from a planking position. That's like a push-up position, but being on your elbows like this on the ground. If this was the ground, I'd be on my elbows, out of breath, playing, playing my breathing rhythms. So if you have to breathe rhythms and do melodics when you're out of breath, when you're not out of breath, you will, you will not run out of breath, um, you will not, want for breath because a lot of the melodic and especially deep rhythms that I do long rhythms I'm just sipping on air I'm surviving on very very small amount of air and I'm camouflaging any of my breathing into my song so it's important if you want to be able to play like me or at least for for my purposes for me to be in good shape and for me to have good cardio and also to implement the harp with my workouts anyways thank you so much universal uh, universal production for your question um i wish you the best in playing the harp practice your scales every day practice your breathing carry a harp on you what i like to do is i like to strategically place harps all over the house so anytime i have a minute or Feel the need to play the harp. I also carry harps on me in public as well in my pocket or in a in a necklace case. So I can just bust out a harp and start playing. And it's not how many years you've been playing. Because I haven't been playing that long. I've been playing about three, three years and some change maybe. It's not how many years you play the harp. It's how many, how much time you spend every day and how much passion you put into the instrument. So I encourage you, play the harp often. Practice dedicated scales and practice dedicated specific techniques if you click the link below for my advanced jaw harp technique um, there's going to be a lot of good stuff you can work on every day i would allocate at least 15 to 30 minutes every day of practicing techniques just practicing techniques and then 15 to 30 minutes of just free play and just having fun on the instrument 
Anyways, thank you so much, Universal Production, for your question. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more Harpery. I love you. Keep your harps clean. Keep them dry. Keep them oiled. Adios. <laughs>